All right, so let's talk about the vice presidential debate. It definitely was not what I was expecting, especially from J.D. Vance. I think he was very impressive and he blew a lot of people away. Obviously, the hyper-partisan Democrats are going to be like, oh, well, J.D. Vance sucked. Obviously, Tim Waltz won that debate. But if you're just looking at it from an objective lens, J.D. Vance clearly outmaneuvered Tim Waltz and is definitely seems like a stronger VP choice. And that's after me making all those videos critical of J.D. Vance, being like, what the hell was Trump thinking? He definitely should have went with someone else. I was really saying uh, that it should have been Glenn Youngkin, especially strategically, because you would have been able to get Virginia because he's a relatively popular governor there. And J.D. Vance seemed to have a lot of baggage and didn't seem like he was really that qualified to be vice president or president, frankly, which sounds like a weird criticism because Trump himself was not necessarily qualified, right? And that was kind of the whole appeal to him. But I kind of get now why... Trump chose him. He's the heir apparent to the MAGA movement. Trump sees a lot in himself in J.D. Vance. So I think that is ultimately why he went with him. And Vance can definitely hold his own in a debate. He's a very smart person. And I think that shouldn't really come as a surprise. There are a lot of people in the media that were kind of portraying him as a Dan Quayle type candidate. You know, in the sense that he was young, clueless, didn't know what the fuck he was talking about, and just made a fool out of himself and was horrible, like all these different things. Uh, he's no Dan Quayle. Uh, he's definitely no Dan Quayle. Uh, I think if something happened to Trump, and let's be realistic here, there is a much better chance that something happens to Trump than something happens to Harris. There's a much stronger possibility that if Trump wins, that that uh, J.D. Vance becomes the president than if Harris wins, that Tim Walsh will be president, just because uh, Trump's up there in age, and you, you never know, at that age, your health can just rapidly decline, or you can just die in your sleep. Like, it's a fucked up thing to say, but that's the reality of, the, of nature, you know? I'm not even saying it to be mean. I don't want it to happen. I'm just saying it's something that has to be considered when we're making our choices and voting that vice president might actually be a lot more important now than it ever was before, especially when Biden was the presumed candidate and Harris was originally just going to run again as vice president and not actually on the front of the ticket. But yeah, I mean, I think I liked what I liked from both candidates is that they didn't attack each other. I mean, obviously, I mean, Walt spent plenty of time attacking Trump. Uh, Vance spent plenty of time attacking Harris. So they did focus it more on the, you know, the main candidates for the, for the presidential election. It would, they made it more about them than about themselves, which makes a lot of sense, but it seems a lot more cordial, a lot more respectful. Uh, there were times where the, the moderators were kind of going at JD Vance, uh, but it was not nearly as bad as what happened during the ABC debate with, with Trump and Harris. So, I mean, I think he, he held his own very well. He held his own very well. And I think a, a lot of independent-minded people, you know, not partisans, but actual actual independents, have definitely gained a more favorable view of J.D. Vance after that debate. Absolutely. I think he did very well. Um, and he, he did what he had to do. He got the job done. And that's great. So, you know, the thing that really struck me and really amazed me was CBS, after the debate, posted on Facebook a fact check of different talking points that uh, each candidate has made. And one thing that I, that my jaw literally dropped to the floor when I saw this, I saw, and I'm like, as soon as I saw it, like it said, uh, like JD Vance made a claim that uh, the, the rise of illegal immigration is uh, responsible for the housing crisis. CBS did a fact check of it. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I know where this is going, but they said it was true. CBS fact-checked it and said that was true. What J.D. Vance said about illegal immigrants causing housing crisis and the, the housing uh, costs skyrocketing was because of illegal immigrants. CBS said that was true. What the fuck? So I'm like, oh, shit. That, that's, I definitely did not expect that one. <laughs> definitely not. That's something I would expect from, like, Fox News, maybe. 
but not CBS News, especially since they do definitely have a bit of a left wing, a left wing slant, not quite to the level of MSNBC, because they're just way far, and even CNN, they're not as far as CNN is, but poof, <laughs> that really uh, threw me under a loop. And really just showed, like, wow, like, if even CBS is saying it's true, then it's got, then it's got to be true, right? Um, but, yeah, overall, I think he did great. Uh, Walt didn't look that good. But ultimately, is it, does it really matter? That's really the, the main question here. I think, first of all, it's bad that it, it looks like it's going to end, that the whole debate is going to end with the vice presidential debate. And there's not going to be another one between Trump and Harris. It is what it is. I understand why Trump made that decision. Because clearly they were not going to, it was not going to be on the level playing field. They were going to go after Trump. And, you know, anytime he made a statement that they deemed was false, and a lot of the time it wasn't even false. I mean, obviously he says false things, but they went way overboard. And, and of course, you know, Harris said plenty of, of false statements during that debate about there being no active military personnel and all that stuff, like engaged in combat. None of that was happening. It, w it was not <laughs> and and then there was a whole video of, of people who were actually serving in combat that were saying, well, then what the fuck are we pretty much? Like, really, Harris? Uh, they didn't fact check her when she said that, of course. And they let her slide on everything. So I understand Trump and why he's like, nah, I don't, I'm not going to do another debate. He said, I'll do a CNN, like, I'll do another debate with whoever you want if you also do a Fox News debate, if you get on pretty much equal footing and like you go in hostile territory like if I have to go to hostile territory then you also have to do it by going to Fox News and she said no but everyone calls Trump a coward and not Harris I love how that goes I, lo I love how that happens but it's it is what it is um I don't know if that's going to change the course of this election uh, I mean with Trump not willing to do another debate. I mean, I don't know if another debate at this point would change anything, like, because it's, it's just going to be more of the same, I feel, compared to the, you know, the ABC debate. But as far as the vice presidential debate is concerned, I think it'll change in the fact that if there were people who said that, who were not going to support Trump because of J.D. Vance, then I think a lot of those guys are going to, a lot of, a lot of those folks, a lot of those voters are going to change their, uh, their opinion that way. And they might be more willing to vote for Trump now because, like I said, J.D. Vance had a very strong performance. But otherwise, not really. It's going to be relatively inconsequential because vice presidential debates don't really change the outcome of elections. Vice presidential picks, for the most part, don't change the outcome of presidential elections. Although many people are saying, oh, it's looking like Trump might win Pennsylvania. If that happens, oh, it should have done Josh Shapiro, you know, for Harris. I don't know. But, like I keep saying in a lot of these videos, talking about the elections, we'll find out soon enough. We are five weeks, less than five weeks now from this election. We are like four and a half weeks now. It's crazy that, that so much time has flown by and, you know, we're at that point now. And I know there's a lot of people are getting that ele election anxiety, myself included, you know, as we're getting closer and closer and closer to the day. It's like, oh man, I really, really, really really want Trump to win, and I'm sure a lot of people the other way that are nervous about Trump winning, and they're like, they really want Harris to win. Either way, we got to come to terms with the outcome and try to accept things the way they are, because we have no control over it, you know, either way, and we need to, like, stop being like, oh, because you voted for this person, go fuck yourself, you're a piece of shit. Like, how do you expect anything to change if everyone's just going to be in their own echo chambers? It's like, you know, that's why we're so polarized and divisive and nothing fucking gets done. I mean, even at its best, government doesn't fucking do shit. They just raise your taxes and make you pay more money and just fuck you over. That's what they do. That's that's all all the times when you have bipartisan agreement and bipartisan support. That's always what it is, is to just fuck over the people, not to actually accomplish anything that improves people's lives. Oh, no. Of course not. You can't have that. So, whatever. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section about the vice presidential debate. How do you think? Uh, tr uh, how do you think that Vance did? How do you think Waltz did? And yeah, just let me know in the comments below.